Uh, during his 16-year career, our uh, first guest won 77 tournaments and earned seven Grand Slam titles, establishing himself as a true tennis legend. He's joining us tonight for the first time, and we could not be happier to have him with us. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the one, the only, John McEnroe. Good to have you here, John. Thank you very, very much. And let me just tell you, and this means nothing to you, really, but you are the reason I started playing tennis, and I would guess you're the reason millions and millions of people around the world took uh, to the game of tennis because no, of the... I don't the... think so. Yeah, I think so. You don't think so? No. That may be the reason that question calls and got angry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. Open. You're working as a uh, commentator for, for this network, weren't you? Shh. Yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> When, when you talk about others playing the game of tennis, do you have to be careful so you don't upset the players? Yeah, I got to be positive. You had Pete on a couple of days ago. Yeah, I got to yeah. kiss his you-know-what during, mm -hmm. you know, during the tournament. Andre gets bent out of shape. Yeah. The bars back, you know, all of them. They're all the same. Has anybody ever confronted you, ever questioned your assessment of their play? Uh, Javier Sanchez, can I say yes? <laughs> <laughs> Point penalty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've said that a few times in my day. So it's oh, cost me about man. 150 grand. Whoa, <laughs> we're not even warmed up here. <laughs> uh, what did you say about Mr. Sanchez? That uh... well, I said he had a one percent chance of beating Chang, mm -hmm. and he, did, he, he didn't take to it too well. Yeah. And so what did you what did you say when he I said? said what... actually, I said actually, I said he had a two percent chance. <laughs> it made him feel a little <laughs> yeah, bit better. <laughs> oh man, where would you be if you were playing today? Actively with these guys, where would you be ranked now in this well, field of that, functions? That's hard to say. I'd like I'd like to try, but uh, yeah. you know, the older I get, the better I used to be, Dave. Mm -hmm. Unlike sure. you. <laughs> no, unlike I Dave. Don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I used to be good. This guy's getting better with age. <laughs> yeah, how about yeah. that? I want to tell you. Uh, let me tell you, I've been a big fan for a long time. So and I, just and I you. Thank, thank you very you much. much. Even your show in the daytime. The, yeah, the old morning show. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You watch that few show? Viewers, you yeah. were the one. Yes. There <laughs> they go. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, and uh, forgive me if I just get sloppy on this. When I, you used to play uh, Bjorn Borg. Man, I'm telling you, at Wimbledon, that was something. Yeah. You, that was captivating tennis. Now, w if you can objectively evaluate that compared to, like, a finals this year at Wimbledon or a finals a this year at the U.S. A lot less boring. A lot less boring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mar we had a little bit of energy and personality. Connors, uh, Bjorn Borg was the Iceman. Mm -hmm. Jimmy and I made up the fire part. Uh, yeah. All these guys are great guys. Sampras, you know, Jim Courier. Andre's got a bit of a personality. He grew up in Vegas, so, yeah. you know, imagine that. <laughs> 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 Boris Becker, there's a couple guys out there, but most of the guys are uh, just, you know, pay their, you know, just go out there. Pick up the huge check, pick huge. up the enormous, the enormous check and keep Five moving. Five times what, what But if, what you can, if you can now take the personalities, uh, oh, you did all right. I did you all did, right. We're did not having right. dinners for you. You did okay. <laughs> uh, but if you take the personalities out of the competition, how, how did the, uh, the level of play stack up with what it is today? Uh, I think the tennis itself technically was better, but mm -hmm. I think the athletes are far superior. The equipment's right. better. But, I mean, I think we could stack up just fine. But I think guys are getting bigger. I mean, I didn't think Dr. J that could be another guy. And then Michael Jordan came along. Yeah. So, uh, And why did stuff, the, why are the rackets enormous now? You I have know? no idea. I think we should go back to what? Any tennis players? Yeah. Out there? Yeah. Wood rackets, all right? And now, let's see how these guys play with wood rackets. You, you, you know, and you're a big fan of baseball, right? Yeah. They don't use graphite bats out in the, no, in the majors, exactly. right? No, you know, it's wood. It's they do it wood. in college, the kids, and they should yeah. have the pros play with the wood. And the, the difference is control. You have to have uh, pinpoint control when you're using the smaller racket. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what was that? The, a lot smaller head. I don't even want to get it. Can we quit while we're behind? <laughs> they what got bigger heads these days. Yeah. I, I'm completely lost here, and I feel a little silly about it. What about these uh, Jensen brothers? What's the deal on yeah. all... What a bunch of clowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're supposed to be like wacky tennis guys or something? They're, they're sort of entertainment tennis, but they, if they could play, they'd have more credibility. Yeah. But the problem is they, can, they don't know how to play. <laughs> but they're good guys, Luke and Murphy, if you watch them. They're nice blokes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... You know, I may have to call a match of theirs next would year. Would you... What would be ways that you would want to uh, change the game if you could? Well, I'd go back to wood rackets. I'd right. make a season. I'd try to el eliminate lets, try to get the game a little faster. I think four hours is too long to watch a tennis match. Right. It gets a little boring after a while. Uh, 
God, we could go down the list of things. Uh, I'd like to see the top players play more often, a way mm -hmm. to determine that. If you play the same events, so you can truly see who the best player is. Mm -hmm. Who do you think when you see play now that you'd have trouble with? Sampras and Agassi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, I look at some of the other guys. Uh, Michael Chang's a great competitor, but I like my chances against... He's a little guy, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever barfed on court like Sampras did? No, there? you got to replay that again? Yeah, I think, I think we have it loaded up. I tell you what, stay right there, John. <laughs> We're going to do a commercial, and then we'll be right back here with Mr. McEnroe. I, uh, uh, years and years ago, I read a, a profile of you uh, in, I think, Sports Illustrated. And it was, uh, I thought it was a great article because it gave me insight and perspective about you and into your life and activities that I don't think I would have had access to. And the assessment that the man doing the article came away with was, or the one he proposed, you and, and your temper on court and why you sometimes had difficulty controlling it was born of the fact that you were so good. I'd like to hear this. You were so good, and you could hear a shot that was in, you could hear a shot that was out, you could hear a let, you could hear a net ball, you could see this, and when, when the, the call did not agree with what you knew to be the case, it frustrated and angered you. You see the Mac cam on the CBS US yeah, Open this yeah, year? Yeah. yeah. Now you can see who really sees the balls. Okay? <laughs> the players see the balls, the umpires don't see them. It's but take, very us through, take us through that, what happens, because I know that you show up for a match, you think, well, I feel fine. I'm not going to lose my temper. And then two minutes yeah. into it, bang! <laughs> <laughs> my dad stole me a thousand times. You know, just go out there and play. You're better than those guys, right? That's right. Just keep your cool. But it doesn't work. work that way, does it? it? Well, it doesn't work that way. I go out there within a couple games. You know, they make a couple bad calls. A couple people call me jerks in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing every night right here, John. <laughs> the same damn thing. And then... <laughs> and then afterward, afterward, you feel badly about it. You know, it, it's sort of chemical. It sort of burns through you, and then you feel remorse and so, guilt. Somewhat Jekyll and Hyde-ish, yeah. you know. But, I mean, at the same time, it's a serious thing. I mean, that's my job. People didn't seem to take it very seriously. Umpires sometimes sleeping on the job. 65-year-old yeah. <laughs> guys calling the lines of the finals of Wimbledon. Dozing I mean, off. Give me a break, yeah. you know. Paul, just checking to see if you're awake. No, no. All right. <laughs> uh, you're joke. whipping boy yeah, all these I know, years. I, I mean, know. that's cruel. But you know yeah. when I used to watch it, it was uh, guys like uh, Eli Nastasi. Yeah. Uh, Pancho Gonzalez. Yes. Uh, Jimmy Con Manuel Connors. Manuel Arantes. No, he was a nice guy. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. No, I'm saying these are guys oh, that I thought I you were talking about the guys that I learned from. Oh, yeah. No, but, but, but Eli was a nice guy as well, but very, very colorful, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it, yeah. He, 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 the difference was that I didn't go out there and deliberately try to anger my opponent. Uh-huh. Uh, I just waited a couple calls, then they got angry with me for stalling and uh, claiming that I was doing it on purpose. Yeah. But Ely went out there with the express purpose of... He was baiting them. Exactly. Yeah. Your opponent, I mean, your opponent, though. As a, as a competitor, as an athlete, when, when this would happen to you, would it make you a better player or make you a worse player? Uh, initially, it made me better. I mean, I really was into what I was doing. I was going to change the sport of tennis. I wanted to bring it to the masses, which I still like to do yeah. here. But after a while, you bang your head against the wall enough, it starts hurting a little bit. Yeah. So. And then I got worse. I had kids, I realized how fool, what a fool I was. I got four kids, Dave. My fiance wants to say hello, Patty Smythe. Uh, she's you great, know. you know, she's been on the show many times. I know. She always just knocks the place apart when she Absolutely. Comes out. She's, ready. she's ready if you right now to sing something. Is she, is she really ready? <laughs> oh no, see now you're <laughs> Yeah. <Okay. laughs> hey, Dave, I'm thinking. <laughs> hey, oh yeah. Hey, Patty Smythe. And you, you guys have a band together, right? Uh, no. No, she doesn't have anything to do with me. No, musical. you play in a little. You have a band. You I play have our old guitar player, Keith Mack, who plays with me. I'm trying to get a band together, but I'll tell you, it's uh -huh. a different story. Do you, you, do you have the same passion for music that you do for tennis? I, I'm more into music than I'm into tennis, mm -hmm. but I'm unfortunately pretty, you know, mediocre. As a matter of fact, I had a guy by the name of David Bowie. Has anyone heard of David Bowie? <laughs> David Bowie was uh, staying at a hotel up on, on top of where I was, and I, was, I, I didn't know this. So I was actually beginning guitar like mm -hmm. 10, 12 years ago, trying to play Rebel Rebel, all right? <laughs> I get a knock on the door. It's David Bowie says, listen, would you like to come up for a beer, but promise not to bring your guitar? Ah, that hurts. <laughs> Ouch! So I'll give you an idea about my uh, music. Uh, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. But and, so and, now, and now you're spending time playing uh, tennis with uh, Jimmy Connors. What is that like? Yeah, at one time you hated this guy, didn't you? Honestly, you hated him, didn't you? I uh, severely disliked him. You hated him. Yeah. You hated this guy. <laughs> you thought this guy was a punk, didn't he you? He is a punk. Yeah! <laughs> but, but I'm a punk, I guess. 
And now you guys are We're on the dinosaur tennis. tour. Mm -hmm. The old guys, 35 and over. We go and we just, uh, I guess a few people still want to see us play, but we're pretty bad, actually. No, no, you got to be pretty good. I no, think we're even not. We're pretty bad. I think it's probably still a very high level of skilled tennis. <laughs> yeah. I would think so. Have you seen a match? No, I haven't yeah. seen one. Well, come out and see our match next right. year. No. Uh, you know, uh, uh, occasionally with this job, you get to meet people that really meant a great deal to you in all aspects of your life, and I feel that way about you. Thank you for being you here. You meant a great deal to me. Too, Thank, you, Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. John McEnroe.